Now we have some other really excellent and easy proofs that give us a whole lot of excellent and very cool information. Uh, but first, we do have to understand that any conductor in electrostatic equilibrium is an equipotential surface or solid. We've discussed this before, but basically, if you have a sphere here of charge Q, the potential and its radius R, the potential at its surface right there, V equals KQ over R. But once you get it to that surface, if this is a conductor, it's free. It takes no extra work to move it all around in here because E equals zero in there. So in other words, the potential will not change. It takes no extra work to move it anywhere in there. So the potential is all the same everywhere inside the conductor. So the potential is the same everywhere on that. Now what this allows us to do is to prove on a charged conductor in electrostatic equilibrium, sigma, the surface charge density, is greatest at points of lowest radius of curvature, like points. And this is how uh, lightning rods work. We can get uh, the surface charge density so high in the, the end of a pin that the charge just wants to jump off. The field is so strong there. So here's our proof of that. What I have is two conducting spheres connected with a wire. And we are going to assume that they are at electrostatic equilibrium. We know sphere one has charge Q1 and sphere two has charge Q2. The potential right here, V is just gonna be K times Q1 over R1. We figured that out before. What will the V on this one be right there? Well, the V there will be KQ2 over R2. So because this is a, a conductor, the whole thing is connected by a wire here, that's a conductor. So this whole thing is one conductor, it's gotta be equal potential, meaning this whole thing is at one potential V. So I can just set these two things equal to each other. In other words, KQ1 over R1 is equal to KQ2 over R2. And again, we can only say that these two potentials are equal when it's at electrostatic equilibrium. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna solve for the relationship between Q1 and R1. I just made those uh, sizes correspond uh, just so we can understand a little bit more conceptually. Yes, Q1 has more charge on it if it's got a bigger radius. But I'm interested in also finding the surface charge density on both of these. And what we're trying to show is that the surface charge density on two, even though there's less charge on sphere two, the surface charge density will be greater. The charges will be closer together, which means the field will be stronger around sphere number two. So let's go ahead and find that. I'm just gonna rearrange this a little bit. Note that sigma is equal to charge over the area, which is gonna be equal to Q over four pi R squared. So let's start with our equality of Q1 over R1 equals Q2 over R2. But I'm gonna make this side look like sigma one. In other words, I'm gonna multiply the uh, bottom here by R1. I've gotta do that on this side too. I'm gonna multiply the bottom here by four pi, and I'll do the same thing over here, four pi. So now I've got, this is, notice this is Q1 over four pi R1 squared. That's just sigma one. And that is equal to, according to what I have over here, Q2 over four pi R2, uh, one over R1, I need to make the right side look like sigma two. To do that, I have to multiply the bottom by R2, and then I'm going to just multiply the top by R2 as well, so it stays equivalent. Notice that this right here, that part of it, is sigma two. Sigma two times what's left over here is R2 over R1. Bottom line is that the ratio of sigma one to sigma two is equal to R2 over R1. One with the big radii, which is R1, has a smaller surface charge density. 
because R2 is small, R1 is large, notice that this is an inverse ratio. If R2 is half as big as R1, then sigma 2 will be twice as much as sigma 1. If you had something like a pin, this has a really low radius of curvature right there, such that the charge will be way spread out if it's a charged pin, it'll be way spread out here, but it'll be super concentrated right there. A lot of charge at the end, which means that the field strength will be very, very strong at the end. And that's how you can get a lightning rod to work. Uh, it will actually cause air to get ionized right at that tip. And uh, charges will just fly towards or away, whichever way they need to go. And that will actually prevent lightning from striking. Pretty cool stuff.